The M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro has the same chip and very similar specs, but why would you pick one over the other? Well, I have five reasons why you'd pick the M1 MacBook Air over the M1 MacBook Pro. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, but today I'm gonna to give you five reasons why you should go for the MacBook Air over the MacBook Pro. And don't worry, I'll be doing another video with five reasons why you should go for the Pro over the Air. So check that one out. But for now, let's get into this video. Firstly is the price. It's 300 pounds cheaper than the Pro. And honestly, you aren't missing out on much. The M1 Air performance is almost identical in most situations. And if you are editing 4K videos like mine on the channel, I honestly saw no performance difference in editing or exporting. And when you push the system in other tasks for more than 15 minutes at full load, you'll see maybe a performance difference of about 10%. However, if we look at the price to performance difference, the MacBook Air is better according to my tests and uses. It managed to handle all of my video editing and as long as you aren't exporting back to back or compressing back to back, this has about 85 to 90% of the performance for around 75% of the cost. For 1,000 pounds, it smashes all of my Intel 13 inch models that I've had previously and punches above the MacBooks that were twice the price as the Intel ones from last year. This is such a capable machine and even though it may thermal throttle, it still performs better than the Intel MacBooks, which is impressive for a first gen product. Honestly, if you were looking at a MacBook Pro 13 inch last year, the two port or the four port model, then this MacBook Air would beat that model uh, in almost every time task even when it's thermal throttling and just to let you know even though it does thermal throttle it still didn't get as hot as my Intel MacBook because even with two fans in that thing it still stayed at 98 to 99 degrees at times at extended loads so this MacBook Air even though it does thermal throttle it thermal throttles properly because it does get those temperatures down now not having a fan might be a downside for some who want the Mac maximum performance at full load for extended times, but the upside is that this machine is completely silent no matter what you're doing, meaning that if you're using this in a class, you'll have no issues. And when you're on video calls, you won't have to worry about fan noise ruining your audio. This also means that when you are, let's say, using Logic Pro, which works great on the MacBook Air, you should check out my video on that, as I did a few tests on these MacBooks and Logic Pro. But if you use this while you're recording, you won't have to worry about fans interfering with your audio. Also, the thermals weren't as bad as my Intel MacBooks. Both the Air and the Pro handle thermals absolutely fine with those applications. The third reason to go for the Air over the Pro is that people who've used the touch bar were a little bit disappointed as it didn't add too much functionality. Plus, some users found that the touch bar actually made certain tasks harder. And I know this sounds weird, but the main reason to go for this is that it has a traditional keyboard layer and in my personal experience I actually do find that I accidentally touch the touch bar which can be annoying because sometimes I don't want to do that and it does something that I don't want it to do so having a traditional uh, keyboard actually is a plus and also some people have mentioned that there have been some bugs with the touch bar with certain applications so it does sometimes lock up also talking about the keyboard my fourth reason is that because of the wedge shape of the M1 Mapper Care it's actually a nicer typing experience than the MacBook Pro. It's so nice when typing, I actually gravitate towards my MacBook Air when I need to send an email or write up notes or even write up my scripts compared to my M1 MacBook Pro. And the last reason to go for the MacBook Air is that it is lighter than the MacBook Pro. Yes, only by 110 grams, but if you're carrying this along with a lot of other stuff, then every gram saving does help. Okay, this point is a little bit of a stretch, but it's a valid one and it gets me to five points. Now, I will be doing a few more videos on these MacBooks as there is a lot to discuss. And this year has been the biggest change, obviously not from design, but obviously with its internals and with pricing being so similar with the same chips in both the Air and the Pro, I just wanna keep giving you the answers to your questions that you keep flooding me with. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So you know what to do. 
leave a comment down below on your thoughts and also check out the links in the description to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarMoon. Drop me a like on this video if you've enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button so you can see more. But if you want to see more from me right now, you know what to do. There's two videos, one, two, click on them. Well, one of them, enjoy it, like it, you know what to do. Anyway, enjoy yourself and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.